Okay, hello YouTube. It's been a long time. Um, I've been away having a family and um, moving house and moving business and stuff like that. So I've been super busy, so I haven't done any tutorials for ages, but I'm going to try and get a bit more of a schedule going from now. I've moved house, so I'm now actually going to have my own kind of hobby area so I can set up a camera and stuff and have a bit more permanent um, kind of home for my Warhammer. So I've had a few people recently asking a lot about the uh, water bases for my Ardenes Deepkin, which are these ones you can see here. Um, as you can see as I twist the camera, I've done kind of strings of water shooting off and um, I'll get you a good close up. So yeah, I thought I'd do a tutorial, um, been so many people had asked for it um, and I'll be able to kind of go through the stages with you and then I will kind of crack on and do one to see you can see the other ones um, and then this one's kind of a middle stage between the lot but anyway so what you'll need is um, nail caviar which you can get from um, eBay this was about two quid and then green stuff world UV resin and then this is just the transparent one and then this one is UV resin blue. So this isn't actually one they make. This is one I made with just the normal transparent and then mixing. Um, it's quite hard to kind of give a, a definite. I kind of just tipped it into the bottle. Um, probably 20 mil would, would give you a good, good kind of effect. But that's really helped to kind of give some depth to the water. Um, and then I've just got the little UV resin just for like neater area details. Um, fishing line, which we have got 0.25. Again, this came off eBay, it was like a quid, um, super cheap. Um, and then Vallejo acrylic water texture. Obviously a UV torch again, you, um, Green Stuff World, just because that's where I bought the other stuff, so it made sense. Uh, a couple of paints, I'm using uh, Jordlin, turquoise and purity white i'm not too fast on the purity white to be fair it's not my favorite white um but i've misplaced my vallejo game dead white which is probably what i would use um but the turquoise is nice both of those are scale 75 and then this is the base for one of my ardenes deepkin models so we'll get cracking into that and i'll kind of give you an idea of how we do it Okay, so two other things I forgot to mention were um, Armageddon dust uh, texture and some cotton ball pads. These are super cheap, you can get them from anywhere. Um, I think these are about 60p from Tesco's. Um, but anyway, so first off, I'm going to start with the blue green stuff world UV resin. And this is when you kind of just need to decide what percentage of the base is going to be water. I, I vary it some i will go like all the way down to three quarters some i'll only do first kind of third um this one will get roughly half and basically you just want to put some of the uv resin all around um and this gives it height as well which is nice so this is another reason why we use the armageddon dust texture because that will also add height so you can then get a kind of good idea of um like leveling out the base but you will get height this way so that will give it more of a kind of a realistic effect um grab anything you want i'm just going to use a screwdriver because it's flat and you can just dab it around and the good thing about a flat screwdriver you could use like a sculpting tool or anything like that um i just like the screwdriver because it's flat on the end um not probably very conventional in wargaming tools but it's to hand so it'll do and yeah just make sure it touches the edges because you will get a bit of shrinkage with uv um but it doesn't matter too much because you you'll get shrinkage at the edges here but this is where we're going to be doing our wave effects so it won't matter too much that it's shrunken at the edges a little bit you can go up onto the objects if you want to create splashes but we'll be doing that later anyway so there you can see the blue one gives it a lot of depth, which is really good. And then just hit it with the UV torch. Usually kind of 20, 30 seconds is enough. 
So I'll do that and then I'll um, catch you in the next bit. Okay, so next up we're just going to do the um, Armageddon dust texture from Citadel. This is one of those stages where you can, if you're super neat, you can kind of be leaving this to dry while you do the next stage. If you struggle with being super neat, then I would probably wait um, for this to dry before you do the next stage over top. Um, you can apply this with a brush. I'm just using this little um, sculpting tool. Again, it was just off eBay. It's in the um, cheap, I think it was a pack of five for three or four quid, something like that. Um, and yeah, you just, again, right into all the edges and just use it to create height. So go over it all and then add some bigger dollops like that. You can see, and you'll just create a really nice height. Good thing about these sculpting tools is you can kind of get quite a sharp edge on it, as you can see there. As long as you get the angle right, you can get a nice sharp edge. Because we're going to do black base rooms on this. Base rooms is entirely up to you, really. You can make your own choice. I just personally like black base rooms. I just think it's a nice frame for the model. But yeah, so crack on with all that. And then you're probably going to want at least probably half an hour of this to dry if you aren't super neat. Um, what I mean by super neat is you're going to now have all the wave effects coming here. So you definitely don't want to get brown sand into your crispy white waves. So probably best to just leave it to dry in between. Okay, so next up we are going to use a Citadel Layer of Shabbity Bone and Vallejo Game Colour Off White. So these are just a light dry brush. Just onto the sandy muddy areas. Get me thumb out of the way. As you can see they just pick up the raised points. It's only a really light dry brush, we aren't trying to get anything too uh, heavy duty here. Perfect, and then on to the game colour. This is even like your dry brush really, just mix the two together, don't worry about washing your brush in routine, you'll just get a nice blend that way. There we go, and that's that stage done and dusted too. Okay, so next up we're going to use the paint, so Adriatic Blue, first off, let's put some on the palette. And I'm not going to water this down at all um, because I don't want it to be smooth and I don't want it to be particularly wet. I'm just going to use this old brush, some um, Dalarani number four, but it doesn't really matter, anything old. Um, and it's almost like just a stipple effect. And you want to make it kind of the most stippled towards the shore and where it meets any objects and around the front or around the edge of the base basically so th this is going to give it kind of a washy effect um, where it meets and then when we add the white on the next layer you'll see exactly why we're doing this but this just builds it up underneath the water effect um, just gives you kind of a bit of texture, um, but also just gives you something to kind of change the the colour of the water with, rather than just having clear water on a back black base. So that's that bit done, and then just a quick wash of the brush and straight into the white. Um, instead of washing that brush, I'm probably just going to shoot across to a different brush to save time. Um, I would recommend washing your brush out at this point um, or swap into a different one purely because you don't want the white and the blue to blend too much. Um, but again, yeah, this is now where you're going to get your kind of wave effect on your edges. And you see I'm just again stippling 
a little bit out of shot there really but yeah just kind of stippling that just like that super easy super quick you don't need to be very skilled with a brush or very accurate even um, you're just trying to get a textured effect um, with a clear gradient really so as you can see you kind of got your dark medium and then your light right at the edges they have mixed a little bit um, what I'll probably do is just allow that to dry for 10 20 seconds and then just go back with some more white um, just like that there you go and that's the most important parts really so I like my whitest whites on the front edge and the back where they join against the uh, against the earth and then just a little bit around the sides and anywhere where it really joins and that doesn't matter if it goes up on the uh, rocks or anything because you're going to be doing a kind of splash effect up on that anyway perfect so I'll let that dry and I'll come back for the next stage cool so next stage Vallejo water texture and um, some cotton wool so basically all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of the water texture and spread it basically all over. I'm going to try and leave it a little bit thicker at the ends where we did the white and at the joins where we did the white as well. So the dark water I'm leaving a bit more simple. Um, but for now this is just mainly a thin layer all over. I'm going to go a little bit thicker at the edges but nothing you're going to really notice a huge amount. Um, but this layer is mainly just to kind of get it stuck down. So as you can see, I've done that there. Um, I haven't gone too neat with it because we're now going to pull it all around. So get your cotton wool pad. Just pull it to pieces. Um, different sizes, shapes, whatever you want to do. And then I'm going to stick this bad boy. I'm going to stick it on there, there we go. And then, yeah, just stick that down with some more water texture. And as you can see already, you're going to start getting these wispy, kind of wavy bits. Like that. And then you can manipulate that with your paintbrush, as you can see there. To kind of waves crashing over objects. I mean, you can take as little or as long as you want on this stage. Most of mine, I'll spend quite a while going over this bit, but I'm not going to obviously sit here for the next 20 minutes doing this on camera. But if you can get a good effect there, all you want to do is just make sure you haven't got any bits like this bit down here. It's just dry cotton wool, and that just really doesn't add anything to the effect, apart from making it like you've got cotton wool on your model. So make sure and kind of catch all the loose bits you can add on these bits here like where it comes up here you can add more water texture to that once it's dry so just make sure it's kind of wet you can join it onto objects with lumps of, of water texture like that and that just gives you kind of the ripple splash effect of the water kind of coming up and basically i'm going to concentrate this area on the bits where we concentrated the white paint so around the edge of the base and basically anywhere where it joins onto the model. Again, you can see like that, we're getting a nice effect splashing up the wall. And you can kind of get some, a little bit splashing over onto the land. I try not to do a huge amount, but again, you can see, you can kind of pick it up, move it around just until it looks good. And this gives you height, but also it'll add a nice kind of foamy white edge to the um, joins so it won't be like if you was to have painted it white but it will give you a, almost a white effect as you can see like that you can pick it up move it about pull bits off it whatever you want to do really um, and just crack on like that until you've done that whole bit and then um, what we'll do is we'll do another layer of the same again so just building up that cotton wool effect around the main areas 
and then I'll come back after that next stage for the um, the next few stages. Okay, cool. That's had two layers, and it's now pretty much dry. There's just still a few bits that are slightly damp, but they will just dry up in due course. Next up, we're going to take the Green Stuff World transparent resin again. And what we're going to do with it this time is get some of the fishing wire. And we're just going to take little snippets of it. Um, this is where you just have to get creative with it, really. Try and make it look how you want it to look. Do a little dab of the resin. And then you basically just put your fishing wire in it. And then you just have to kind of adjust it to wherever you feel. You can use pliers for this or um, anything like tweezers or anything. But yeah, just put it where you like it. This is what's good about the UV resin, you just cure it in seconds. Don't know if you can see that. Not with my hand in the way. There. And basically, that's going to give you a splash effect. So that's what I've done on my other models. And then from there, you can put the UV resin on the edge, tip it upside down so it meets right to the point. Shake it down a little bit, UV torch it. There we go. And that's your droplet. What I'll tend to do is put a bit down the st uh, like the stem as well and kind of curve it a little bit. So it's a bit more kind of droplet than splash. But yeah, just build them up wherever you want them really. You can do ones over here. You can even do big splashes and drops all over the place if you want. You just get as creative with it as you'd like. And then once you've done all them, we go on to the last kind of stage, which is this nail caviar. So with those... Um, little stems of kind of water splashes you can put them wherever you want you can put as many as you want on um I, I do quite a few but it depends what effect you want if you just want a kind of more settled sea you can do and then anyway i'm going back to the water texture and i'm just building it up around the edges again where we've done the other stuff and then just dip into this nail caviar i don't know why they call it nail caviar but whatever it looks cool and then yeah so just build that up with the water texture don't know if you can get a good focus on that but that just gives you the kind of rolling wave effect that, you, that we, we're looking for um, and yeah from there on I wash the sand with um, seraphim sepia and then I added some of the winter tufts from Army Painter. And that is basically it. So this is gonna be your kind of final result. As you can see, all the nail caviar just gives it such a good effect. Really like that. Um, I've also got some tiny little seashells in here. And this one um, that I added, you can see the seashells better there. Um, they were getting off eBay, they were like a quid or two quid in a tiny little jar. But um, I've just added them for for effect. But as you can see here, we've got, this is where the um, uh, cotton wool all builds up. And then you've got a stem there coming through. And on here I've added some from the cloak. So yeah, that's your final effect. And uh, yeah, if you've got any other questions, feel free to... Um, Put them down below please like subscribe share it with your friends that'd be really cool um and other than that it's all finished so thank you very much for watching and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one cheers bye, -bye.